Okay, let's talk frozen shoulder and the use of shockwave. How are we gonna make sure we bathe all those tissues in shockwave to help? Now here's the key thing for me. If you can catch your patient in stage one or the freezing stage, you've got a great opportunity to try and maintain some of that external rotation, which therefore gives you some abduction, allows that person to do self-care, put deodorant on and all the rest of it. Really important stages if you're gonna help your patient in that, in that early phase. And I think we need to be looking at no standoff, anteriorly, posteriorly. I then think we put standoff one on, and do the same posterior, lateral, um, and anterior. And then standoff two, we actually come into the auxilla up here and actually try and get into that internal part of the shoulder. And if we bathe that whole area with about 3,000, 4,000 shocks in total, and then use radial across the traps, across pec minor, across, um, basically all of the rotator cuffs, you can really get into teres major, teres minor, as well as, as infraspinatus, and you bathe that whole shoulder area, and you work on the patient putting the back of their hand on their head, which gives you external rotation, abduction, and some extension. So that's a great exercise, see if we can keep them with some of that movement. As they go into stage two, or the frozen stage, you can keep treating in that same way, but you're not gonna be really making any difference in terms of the range of movement, but you will be um, maintaining the, the structures in that area, and hopefully a little bit of strength in some of those tissues they're not really able to use. And then as they come into the thawing stage, it's really much more about the exercise that they're doing, and you can aid that with radial pressure wave around that whole area. So I think the earlier you catch your patient the better. Now Hussein in 2015 did some great work on looking at just radial pressure wave alone, but I really do believe that a combination of the two. Now, what we don't have any data on is how we can use EMTT in that area as well. And I think in that first stage, the freezing stage, where there's quite a lot of pain involved, I think that's where EMTT really comes in, reduces the inflammation, but it's Focus Shockwave is going to help you, I believe, at the higher levels, 0.25 and upwards, break down those adhesions. So hopefully that's helpful. I think you can do way more than six weeks on this and you can keep treating the person throughout the whole phase there. There's no downside, but I do think that Shockwave is the answer for your frozen shoulder patients. Hope that's helpful. Speak soon.